without a doubt for me, um, at least in the way in which I think about American, the American Catholic Church, in fact the way in which I think about the Catholic Church in the 20th century, the most important event was the Second Vatican Council. It was important because it represented a very significant shift in the understanding and the self-understanding of the Catholic Church. Um, it was a shift away from a triumphalistic and isolated church to a church that saw itself responsive to the sign of the times, that saw itself in need of constant reformation, and a church that in the, um, in the words of John the 23rd was ready to open its windows to fresh air. Um, I look at the event of the Second Vatican Council personally, not because I was there, but because it is so much of a background for my personal faith practice, but also for my professional life. I must say, however, that one of my friends, Sister Mary Luke Tobin, was one of the two women uh, permitted to observe at the Second Vatican Council. My observation that two women were permitted to observe shows that all of the issues facing Catholicism in the 20th century were not resolved at the Second Vatican Council, hardly so. And we've come a long way since then in the, next, in the last 30 and 35 years as we move into uh, now a new millennium. The importance of the, 20, of the uh, Second Vatican Council for the American Church, I think, is that not only was, um, was the American Church and the voices uh, for peace and the voices for religious freedom and the voices that contributed to a deepened understanding of scripture and liturgy were not, not only were those voices contributing to the atmosphere in which the council came to be formed, lived and reflected on, but because the Second Vatican Council has also changed um, in some important ways, uh, the experience of American Catholics. Those changes have taken place in a variety of different ways. Uh, clearly, as for all of Catholics around the world, the move from Latin to the vernacular, the invitation to participate in the, uh, participate fully in the liturgical and sacramental life of the church, the invitation to recognize the church, not simply according to a hierarchical model, but to a model of God's people in which all come together to exercise their gifts, to exercise their ministries, in which all have responsibility. Those ideas have transformed American Catholicism and with the exception of uh, some voices of resistance have been, I think, very much welcomed in the American Catholic community. The Second Vatican Council was a kind of watershed in Catholic history. And we say that uh, now, not too many years after that council. Uh, 30 or 40 years is nothing in the history of the church. But I feel confident saying that it was a watershed, that it was a shift, that it represented a new vision, a new way of thinking, a new way of understanding what it meant to be Catholic. I'd like to offer uh, one personal example, uh, not my own at this point, but um, I've been involved in the last 10 or so years in studying the work and writing of a monk by the name of Thomas Merton. And his story is somewhat illustrative of the changes that have been occurring during his lifetime and since in the American church. Merton was a convert to Catholicism. 
He became a Catholic in 1938. And his book, The Seven Story Mountain, his autobiography, published in 1948, now uh, 50 years ago, was a bestseller, much to the surprise of uh, the publisher and perhaps much to the surprise of the publishing community. It, under, it, it tells the story of a real quest for meaning, and not for meaning in an abstract sense, but for meaning embodied in a community of faith. But readers of The Seven Story Mountain, with the perspective of, uh, that we might bring as readers today, would notice that Merton's church was a very triumphalistic one, very confident that it had the truth and it had the whole truth. And Merton's uh, perspective on other traditions was not very laudatory, nor was it affirming. He more or less discounted those other traditions uh, because it was Catholicism that for him had the answer. Now there's more to that book, and you'll have to read it yourself to see why it continues to be such a good seller. But I use Merton as an example because in the course of his lifetime, in 20 years from 1948 to when he died in 68, his story embodies something of the shift in that self-understanding of Catholicism, away from an insulated community to one which turns with a sense of responsibility toward the world. Merton writes at one point that it was no accident that he was born in 1915 in the middle of one war, that he was a contemporary of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and Auschwitz, that these were not accidents, that these were calls to responsibility. And so one of the dimensions, I think, that has come about in that uh, climate of the Second Vatican Council is an awareness uh, not only that we are called to action and responsibility, but that we are called to that action and responsibility as a Catholic community in the midst of other communities of people of faith and people struggling for faith believers and unbelievers, all faced with very serious uh, moral questions and issues. For Merton, the answer was to tap into his tradition, and as he did, discovering its wisdom, he found there the strength that led him forward uh, to speak out on social issues, but also to realize that he was not the only one uh, dipping into that river of wisdom, but that he met persons of faith in Eastern traditions, in um, Islam, in Judaism, who shared uh, that hunger for deep spiritual experience, but who also ready to respond um, in order to meet the world's issues and problems.